Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Cliff Backus, and this is your PushButtonStockTrading.com daily video market review weekend edition. Before we get started, I want to talk about three pieces of software that I find indispensable. I once had a friend for whom I have the utmost respect admonish me against shilling for the software companies. But I feel strongly that traders can and should benefit from highgrowthstock.com, freestockcharts.com, and marketsmith.com. So, shill I will. Let's start with Marketsmith. Marketsmith is a set of investment research tools for mastering the market, offering a set of extremely robust stock screeners, charts, and pattern recognition. More importantly, we use Marketsmith to generate our stock checklist, which we use to develop our universal watch list. Take a free trial of Marketsmith. Next, we have freestockcharts.com, which is a Warden Brothers product and has all the versatility of their TC2000 program on an a la carte basis. These are the charts we use in our daily video market review. I use the premium version, but they also offer an advertising-driven free version. And lastly, highgrowthstock.com, HGSI. HGSI is a remarkably versatile product that I use for analyzing and screening data. The Spectrum Analyzer is an HGSI product, and you can get a one-month free trial of highgrowthstock.com and you don't even need a credit card. And that's our commercial for this week. Okay, stocks closed sharply lower on higher distribution volume again on Friday. Distribution or higher volume selling in the market is a sign of institutional selling. And too much distribution over a short period of time can be an indication that an uptrend is in trouble. Last week we saw three significant distribution days. For the week, the S&P 500 lost 3.6%, while the NASDAQ Composite lost 4.26%. It was the worst week in the market since August 28th, when the NASDAQ lost nearly 7%. New lows outperformed new highs by better than 10 to 1. Small capitalization stocks outperformed large and are now outperforming on a 10-day moving average basis. Breadth was not as bad as Thursday, however, with declining issues topping advancers by only 3 to 2 on the New York Stock Exchange Friday. That noted, on Thursday, our new high, new low oscillator went to a sell signal on the market. The new high, new low is a secondary indicator and has no bearing on our strategies other than to act as a note of caution, a shot across the bow, as it were. That being the case, our market timing model on both the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 went to sell signals on the market on Friday. A sell signal indicates that aggressive traders should be completely off of margin and can sell short. Everybody should sell any long position that, if sold at current stop levels, would result in a loss. All stops should be at their tightest levels on any remaining long positions. Conservative traders may want to hedge their portfolios with Contra ETFs, exchange-traded exchange funds. If you'd like help with Contra ETF strategies, please contact me. Contact information is on the home page. Moving on. As we've been noting recently, Investors Business Daily and I have disagreed on distribution count. Now we disagree on the O'Neill timing model. According to my calculations, the O'Neill model is indicating a market in correction, but Investors Business Daily is showing an uptrend under pressure, with six distribution days on the S&P 500 and five on the NASDAQ. Pick your poison. All of our trading models, or nearly all, are now bearish. Cautions advised. Keep your stops at their tightest levels on all remaining long positions and consider hedging portfolios with Contra ETFs. As always, be sure to follow your written rule sets. A note on written rules. Emotions are the enemy of good trading. Rules keep emotions in check and written rules allow us the greatest edge when trading. I write my trading rules down in outline form so there's never any doubt as to how to handle any situation that the market sends my way. If you'd like help with portfolio management or with your written rule set, please feel free to contact me. My contact information, again, is on the homepage. 
Okay, let's take a quick look at our spectrum analyzer. What we're looking at here is HGSI, High Growth Stock Investors, universe of over 8,000 stocks, sorted by a combination of the most powerful stocks in the most powerful industry groups. We've made a group of the top 100 stocks in that sort. The reason that we look at this is that by noting where the strength in the market is on a daily basis, we can get an idea of where the power in the market is rotating to. The basic premise of momentum trading, which is what we do here, is that we need to identify where the power is and get out in front of it. So let's plug these stocks into our spectrum analyzer and see where the strength in the market is. As we can see, on Friday, of the top 100 stocks in our sort, 17 were from specialty pharmaceuticals, 9 were from biotech, 5 were from medical equipment, 3 were from basic and diversified chemicals, and rounding out the top five specialty chemicals with three, property and casualty insurance with three, publishing and broadcasting with three, healthcare services, generic pharmaceutical, containers and packaging, commercial and residential equipment and systems, consumer finance, all with three stocks in the top 100. We've been seeing a tremendous amount of strength recently from the specialty pharmaceutical and biotech industry. Also, medical equipment's worth keeping an eye on at this point. Let's start today with a look at our NASDAQ composite. NASDAQ composite on Friday was down 77.2 points, or 1.54%. We closed at 49.27. Trading volume was heavier than the prior day giving us another distribution day. For you followers of William O'Neill, currently I'm indicating a market in correction, but Investor's Business Daily is indicating an uptrend under pressure. The market went to a confirmed uptrend on October 2nd. Right now, I am showing eight distribution days in the past month. Investor's Business Daily doesn't count these two days, and so they show six distribution days in the past month. Right now the NASDAQ composite is bracketed by support down here in the 4900 area, and resistance up here at near its old high in the 5164 range. As noted earlier, we've gone to a sell signal on our market timing model indicating that aggressive traders should be completely off of margin and can sell short. Everybody else should sell any long position that, if sold at current stop levels, would result in a loss. All stops should be at their tightest levels on any remaining long positions. Conservative traders may want to hedge their portfolios with contra ETFs. Let's see what the S&P 500 is up to. The S&P on Friday was down 22.93 points, or 1.12%. We closed at 2023. Trading volume was higher than the prior day, giving us another distribution day. The S&P, according to IBD, is in an uptrend under pressure. According to my calculations, we are in a market in correction. According to my count, we have eight distribution days on the S&P. According to Investors Business Daily, we have only these six distribution days. The S&P right now is bracketed by support down here in the 1993 area and resistance up here in the 2044 range. And we have gone to a sell signal on the S&P 500 on our market timing model. Let's take off our markups. And I want to review our market timing model. In order to go to a sell signal on our market timing model, four things have to take place. First, the S&P has to be trading below its 200-day moving average. We show the 200-day moving average in black right here, and the S&P right now is trading well below that level. Secondly, the 10-day moving average on the S&P, which we show in green, has to be trending downward, which it is. Thirdly, the 21-day exponential moving average, which we show in pink, has to be lower than it was two days prior. We also meet that criteria. And finally, the market has to close at least 1% below its 21-day exponential moving average.
This envelope, which I show in a gray dotted line, is a 1% envelope around the 21-day exponential moving average. We've closed below that level, meeting all four of our criteria for a sell signal. And so our market timing model, as I mentioned earlier, is on a sell signal. Even though we're on a sell signal, it's important that we maintain a watch list. Let's take a look at some stocks that we may be interested in watching. But before we do, just a note. All of the individual stocks that we talk about in our video market reviews are from our universal watch list. To qualify for our universal watch list, a stock has to have satisfied at least 72% of our stringent technical and fundamental criteria and continue to satisfy at least 62%. Out of our trading universe of over 7,000 stocks, there are generally only about 50 to 90 stocks that meet these strict criteria and make our universal watch list. These are the only stocks we review in our daily video market review, and for the most part, they're the only stocks that we use in our trading strategies. That noted, first stock I want to take a look at is LGI Homes. LGI is currently working on a second stage square box base. It's not a flat base yet because we haven't had enough time to develop a flat base. A flat base takes a minimum of five weeks to develop. A square box base is a less conservative entry. Note that LGI gets an 80% checklist rating. We have a pivot point of $33.87 right now. Notice this little box. This indicates that the market went on to a sell signal at this point. And so we're not in any hurry to buy LG Homes or any other stock at this point. All we're doing is we're putting together a watch list so that when the market goes back to a buy signal, we have something available to buy. Next, I want to take a look at LinkedIn. LinkedIn provides a social networking platform enabling members to share their personal information online via LinkedIn.com. LinkedIn's working on a long first stage base. This base is over nine months old. It goes all the way back to February of last February of this year. The stock recently broke out of this low base area when it reported earnings. And we have a pivot point on LinkedIn right now of $276.18. LinkedIn gets a 72% checklist rating. And what I'm watching right now is we could be putting in a handle right here on LinkedIn, which would give us a pivot point of $258.39. What we want to see is LinkedIn continuing to work on this handle. The handle has to be at least five sessions old. And we want to see volume dry up as we develop that handle. Again, we're on a sell signal, so we're not in any hurry to buy anything. But we do want to keep LinkedIn on our radar with a possible pivot point of $258.39. We've been watching Store Capital for a while. Store is a real estate investment trust that owns 947 single-tenant commercial real estate properties in 46 states, operated under long-term net leases. Store has been working on this first stage base with a pivot point in the $24.06 area. But we've developed this handle and Store could be bought on a break above $23.13 in the event that we go back to a buy signal on the market. Store gets a 68% checklist rating. And one of the nice things about Store Capital is it gets a 5% dividend yield. Next, we have Heritage Insurance Holdings. Heritage offers personal and commercial residential insurance for single-family homeowners and condominium owners in Florida. Heritage has been working on this first stage base. We had a nice cup and handle base right here that we broke out of oh, about two or three weeks ago in the $23 area. Stock has fallen back into that base. And assuming that we don't break out of the $23 area between now and when the market goes back onto a buy signal, that would be a good point to buy the stock on a break above $23 on at least 140% of average daily volume. If, however, we cross back above the $23 area before the market goes back onto a buy signal, then we would be setting up this handle up here in the $24.96 area and that would become our pivot point. 
Notice how, as we've developed this handle, volumes dried up. That's exactly the type of behavior that you want to see in a cup and handle base. And so Heritage Insurance can be bought at $23 if it's below that level when the market goes back to a buy signal. If it's above that, then we want to look at $24.98 as our pivot point. And we'd buy on a break above $24.98 on at least 140% of average daily volume. But again, market's on a sell signal, and we're not in any hurry to get into any of these positions. And the final stock that I want to take a look at, I want to switch over to Market Smith. Mobilize is an Israeli-based developer of software and related technologies for camera-based advanced driver assistance systems. They make collision avoidance systems, and they're also integral in self-driving cars. I'm going to go over some fundamental information on Mobileye before we actually get into the technicals of the chart. First thing I want to take a look at is the earnings estimates for Mobileye over the next year or so. For 2014, we're looking for a 114% increase in earnings on Mobileye. And for 2016, we're looking for a 64% increase on top of that. Mobileye has a 17% return on equity. Gets a fairly low 79% earnings per share rating. Gets a fairly low 79% composite rating. Both of those are below our minimum 80%. Both of those are below the minimum 80% that we look for. Also, Mobileye gets a very low 35 relative strength rating. That's also well below the 80% that we generally look for. In spite of those weaknesses, Mobileye gets an 80% checklist rating, which is a very high checklist rating, and it's one of the reasons that I keep coming back to Mobileye as a potential buy. We've seen a little bit of squirrely earnings out of Mobileye over the past eight quarters. Notice how earnings eight quarters ago were up 700%, 500%, 67%, 25%, and then we're actually down 25%. We generally want to see earnings increasing. Over the past four quarters, we've gone from minus 25% to a 33% gain, a 100% gain, and a 200% gain. This is a type of accelerating earnings growth that we look for in top-level stock. Over that same period of time, revenues have increased 26%, 28%, 57%, and 104%. We're seeing accelerating revenues and accelerating earnings. Let's flip over and take a look at the daily chart on Mobileye. Looking at the daily chart, we see that the group relative strength for Mobileye is a B. That's on a scale of A to D. A B group relative strength rating is a little bit lower than we would normally like. We want to see stocks that are in the top 40 industry groups, which are generally A rated. Mobileye has been working on this downtrend recently, and I would buy Mobileye on a break above this downtrend line, assuming that the market had gone back onto a buy signal. Mobileye is one of my favorite stocks going forward here, and it's worth keeping an eye on as we wait for the market to go back to a buy signal. That's about all I have for today. If you want to talk about any of the stocks mentioned today or any of our market strategies, please feel free to give me a call, drop me an email, or make an appointment. Come by the office, see what we're up to. Contact information is on the home page please take a minute to go to our subscription page and subscribe to Push Button Stock Trading. You can also follow us on Twitter at Push Button Stock. Again, my name is Cliff Backus. That's your daily video market review. Have a safe and profitable day. Keep your stops in place, and I will see you again tomorrow. Please stay tuned for our important disclaimers. All the best. Disclaimers. Push Button Stock Trading Video Market Review is produced and edited by Clifford B. Backus. Mr. Backus is a Senior Vice President of Investments, Technical Analyst, Portfolio Manager, and Partner with the investment firm of O'Hanison Liqueurs Incorporated. Video Market Review is produced solely for the benefit of our clients, friends, and colleagues. Anything written, stolen, and or plagiarized in this publication 
is done without malice. Further, the analysis and opinions expressed in this publication are strictly those of the editor and not of Ohannis and Liqueurs Incorporated, its affiliates, subsidiaries, or any of the officers or employees of Ohannis and Liqueurs Inc. On that note, we submit the following. The analysis calculations and evaluations presented herein are based on data and assumptions Ohannis and Liqueurs Incorporated believes to be accurate. Ohannis and Liqueurs Incorporated makes no representation that such analysis or calculations are accurate or that such valuations represent levels at which actual trades may occur. This report has been prepared from original sources, except where otherwise noted, and data we believe to be reliable. Ohannis and Liqueurs Inc., its affiliates and subsidiaries and or their officers and employees or their families may from time to time acquire, hold, or sell a position in the securities mentioned herein. Moreover, opinions may differ from one entity to the next. If we are used in connection with the purchase or sale of any security discussed in this report, we may act as principal for our own account or as agent for both the buyer and the seller. Push Button Stock Trading is dedicated to the education of friends, clients, and paid subscribers. Push Button Stock Trading is an information service only. The information provided herein is not to be construed as an offer to buy or sell stocks of any kind. Push Button Stock Trading is created to aid subscribers in making informed investment decisions based wholly or in part on technical analysis. It's possible that at this time or some subsequent date, the editors of push button stock trading may own, buy, or sell the investments presented. All investors should consult a qualified professional before making any investment. The information provided has been obtained from sources deemed to be reliable, but it is not guaranteed as to the accuracy or completeness. The editors of Push Button Stock Trading make every effort to provide timely information to subscribers, but cannot guarantee specific delivery times due to factors beyond our control.